The girl, when she opened her eyes and saw him, immediately realized the truth. She found herself in a world inside a novel. In Japan, she was an ordinary girl named Kyo Koishiwa. However, she was reborn in this world. As the daughter of an aristocrat, she always lived in luxury. Her carefree life was full of joy. She was always served delicious food, and there was nothing better for a girl than being rich. At about age nine, she remembered the contents of the novel. It was a sunny day when a man approached her and asked that Lure greet the guest. When the girl approached, he explained that he was the Duke of Rochester's son and her future husband. The boy bowed before her and said his name was Calix Rochester. Calix Rochester is the son of the Duke of Rochester, one of the most powerful aristocrats, along with his majesty. He's the protagonist of this novel. Well, if there is a protagonist in the novel, there must be a protagonist with whom he will fall in love. The main character had a fiancé whom he left. She was Lure Eckley. The girl did not understand why he did so. Why did this girl take him away from her? And why is everyone around her saying that Lure should sacrifice herself for their happiness? The girl decided that she would never forgive the protagonist for this, so she held a grudge against her, and also committed many atrocities, subsequently executed at the age of 20. And Kyo Koishiwa ended up in this particular girl's body, but she didn't understand why she would have to be the villain. When Lure was introduced to her future husband, the girl fell to the floor and began to cry. Kyo Koishiwa still couldn't believe that ten years later she would be burned. Lure was immediately approached by a boy and a man who introduced him. They asked what was wrong and why the girl was crying. Kyo Koishiwa couldn't understand why this was happening. She hadn't even done anything wrong, and she was about to be executed. The girl wanted to enjoy this life to the maximum. Suddenly, the man took her in his arms and offered to take a break somewhere to calm her down. Kyo Koishiwa was very upset that she was about to be killed. After all, she had just begun to enjoy the paradisiacal life of the rich. What awaits her in the future is not a rich life surrounded by roses, but a living hell. Kyo Koishiwa doesn't want to die at all. The man who looks after Lure gave her a piece of cake and said it was her favorite dessert. He will give her his piece too, so that the girl won't cry. The girl decided that in order to survive, she wouldn't even try to meet Calix when there was a chance for a good life. But in reality, of course, that's not what's going to happen. The girl is such a fool, for she has truly fallen in love with Calix. She wanted to change her fate, so she tried her best to avoid him so he wouldn't get attached to her. Kyo Koishiwa had to try many options, but nothing worked. He still wanted to be near her. Everyone who meets Calix loses his head with his eyes. There is not a single girl in the world who would not be charmed by his sweet voice. He is handsome and talented, as well as powerful and rich. Having all these merits, it is very popular among others. After experiencing his kindness, the girl could not help but fall in love with him. One day, Calix saw the girl, said hello, and told her that she was all pale. Was she having another nightmare? From then on, she waited every time to meet him. One night he kissed her hand and asked her if she would like to spend the night with him. When Calix looked at her with his mesmerizing eyes, she couldn't refuse, so she said she would gladly do it. Her ears stopped hearing his words adequately. That's how she ended up here, in Calix's room. Unfortunately, this scene was also in the novel. In fact, Kyo Koishiwa's plan was to wait for the protagonist to show up and leave Calix to her without too much fuss. And frankly, the girl is very scared that her life follows the plot of the novel. She, as it is written, spent one night with her lover. The girl didn't understand. If she fell in love with Calix, would she necessarily be a villain in the future? Kyo Koishiwa thought that there was no way she should let this happen before the protagonist appeared. There was only a month left. That's very little time. So she has to pull herself together before she really becomes a jealous villain who will ruin the lives of the main characters. And if so, Lur wondered, maybe she should run away from there. But at that moment, Calix came out of the shower and asked her what she was talking about. After that, the guy got closer to her. He looked at her with his beautiful eyes and asked if she really hated him that much or if she was just feeling bad. Lur didn't understand why he was being so nice to her. Then she answered that it was nothing. She was just a little worried. Calix thought for a moment and replied that he was worried too. At that moment, the girl's heart finally melted. Calix took her in his arms and looked her straight in the eyes and told her he loved her. The girl looked at him and said she did too. She loves him too. Calix then carried her to the bed and laid her down, telling her he would be gentle. Kyo Koishiwa thought to herself, 
she'll only let him spend one night with her. After that, she would stay away from him. But really, she would have loved for this moment to last forever. And now it's been three weeks since she slept with Calix. She'd been trying her best to avoid him the whole time. From the beginning there were letters saying he missed her. After that, he wanted them to meet. And so it went on. Each time he tried to get her attention with something new. No matter how much Lur refuses him, he gives her more and more flowers in one day. She's already gotten five bouquets, and it's only just begun. The girl speculated that maybe he wanted to kill her by burying her in flowers. In the original, Calix was completely different. He wasn't so stubborn when it came to Lur. The girl didn't know what to do now. Lur wondered if she could change the plot. But as it was, she still wouldn't be able to change the main points of the story. Therefore, it's useless. And the bad ending is destined to happen after all. No matter how much the girl avoids it. And no matter how hard she tried to avoid Calix, he continued to be stubborn. So she had no choice. At that moment the girl called her maid Annie. She came in and asked if her mistress had called her. Maybe she wanted a pen and paper to be brought to her. But Lure said it was not for that. Let her burn all the letters that Calix had sent. The maid was very surprised, for she had kept them all this time. Lure also told Annie not to accept any more letters from the Duke of Rochester. The maid was very surprised by this. When she asked if maybe they should talk it over properly and come to a good solution, Lure told her that she had already made up her mind, and there was no turning back. Kyokoishiwa didn't understand why she was so sad, because she was doing the right thing. Maybe she loved Calix more than she realized. Suddenly their conversation was interrupted by a knock at the door. Someone said the Duke of Rochester was here to see Mrs. Lure. He wants to see her. Lure was very surprised that Calix had come to see her. One of the servants had said that the Duke would wait for her outside until she came to him. Lure looked out the window where it was raining heavily. It was late fall, and it was easy to catch a cold. Lure said that it was wrong, and then started running towards the door. Ani didn't understand what was happening. Lure wondered if Calix had completely lost his mind, why he was going to stand in this cold and in the rain. And so at last, the girl decided to set aside her feelings for him in order to think straight. She opened the door, and when she saw the man she started to talk, but the guy immediately interrupted her and said that they had finally met. Calix was all soaked because of the rain, but he smiled when he saw the girl and said he missed her a lot. Lure got angry and asked if he had completely lost his mind. What would he do if he caught a cold? Calix then replied to her that she needn't worry, for in order to protect her, he hardened his body every day. But he said it was really cold outside. Lure thought he was being sly and asked why he hadn't put on his cloak. Lure immediately turned to the maids and told them to prepare hot tea and towels immediately. The maids replied that they would do it right away. After that, the girl took Calix's hand and told him to come in, and wondered to herself when he would leave her alone. She was trying to forget him. After that, they went to the room where the fireplace was just about to get hot. Lure told the boy that his unexpected visits were beginning to annoy her. The girl explained that even her servants were beginning to be afraid of him, and she herself is no exception. Calix answered her that he knew everything, and that she wouldn't avoid him for no reason. Let him talk about her. Lure was very scared and thought he understood everything, but she remained silent, not answering his question but making a scared look on her face. Calix stepped closer to her and asked, Did he hurt her in any way? That night Lure was very surprised and replied that she had not. Of course not. Then Calix asked her why she hated him. Lure thought she didn't, but she couldn't tell him that if she fell in love with him, she would become a villain and be executed. So the girl said he was wrong. After that she apologized to him. Calix looked at her and asked if she really did. Wanting to marry the prince, Lure was very surprised at that. She didn't even understand what the prince had to do with it, or why he was suddenly talking about it. Calix, seeing that the girl was silent and turned away from him, replied that he knew it was so. Now he realized what the reason was, but Lure didn't understand what he was even talking about, what he knew. Calix, after a short silence, answered her. The guy said he already knows. He knows that the prince confessed his love to her. The girl certainly didn't expect to hear such a thing. Lure didn't understand how he knew that. The king's second son, a man named Edward Westwing Aberonia, he is handsome, intelligent, talented, but at the same time he has a very complex character, and the commoners are like slaves to him. He orders his assistant to do everything by tomorrow, otherwise he knows what will happen. 
Probably everyone knows about the horror stories starring him. Edward treated the Imperial magicians like clowns. He also drank with the palace servants. He asked that the wizards entertain him properly. And as soon as Edward learned of Lur's engagement, he immediately declared his love for her. He told the girl to leave this very washed-up man and marry him. But of course she refused, and thought that this man was simply unbearable. She was ashamed of that incident, so Lur didn't tell anyone about it. But she didn't understand how Calix knew about it. She didn't know where he'd heard about it, but Calix immediately said Alan had told him about it. It was Lur's brother. The girl thought he wouldn't get rid of her easily. He'd pay for his long tongue. Calix said that she met the prince secretly and asked him to marry her. He agreed to the proposal without a second thought. Lur didn't know what he was talking about, but Calix ignored her questions and said that was why they would be getting married very soon. Lur asked if it was true. She thinks two months is a short time. There is only one month left before the protagonist appears, and if Lur manages to hold out, she will change her destiny. Calix was surprised and asked, Two months? He then said yes, she was right. That was the case until yesterday. The guy said that there was a slight change of plans and their wedding would take place in a week. Lure was very surprised and asked how that could be understood. The girl didn't understand why he changed the term, since it was completely different in the original. Calix answered her question and said that it meant they would be husband and wife in two months. After that he hugged the girl. Kyokoishiwa didn't understand why Calix was so obsessed with Lure. But then suddenly the girl thought about it and realized that if they play a wedding and in a month the main character will appear, they will just get rid of her, throw her away as an unnecessary thing. But the girl had tried to avoid it, and apparently all her efforts had gone to waste. Lur, thinking about it, immediately shoved Calix away and said she didn't want to. She thought it would be better for everyone. Calix was shocked with her reaction. He asked what was wrong with her. Lur thought at that moment that he too would realize it soon. Let him just wait a little longer. Calix will eventually learn that this is the right decision. So the girl tells Calix to have them break off the engagement. The guy was shocked. He asked what she meant, but the girl was not going to answer him. She started pushing him out of the room and told him to leave. Let him just forget about her and then everyone will be better off. But Calix says he can't. He can't leave her alone. After that, the guy turned around to face her and said that Lure Eckley belonged to him and he wouldn't give it back. After saying that, he hugged the girl. Calix continued to hug her and said he wouldn't let her escape. He squeezed hard on her hair, not letting her get out. At that moment, Lure realized that this was not the kind Calix she knew. The girl was very scared, and she didn't understand why things had turned out this way. When she was finally able to return to her room, she was safe. The girl realized that it was the demon Calix Rochester, just possessed her. Lure couldn't believe it was really happening. Calix had also said that they would marry. They had no other choice. It was their destiny. Lure thought, he doesn't know what's in it for her, does he? His destiny, then. He doesn't know anything at all. If it wasn't fate, she wouldn't have pushed him away. They would have been together and enjoyed a happy life. But it's not meant to be. Because exactly one month after their wedding, She's going to be dumped, and she doesn't want to let that happen. Because she loves Calix. She doesn't want them to have to divorce. The girl is not going to repeat the fate of the original heroine of the novel. Aristocrats often enter into political marriages. Sometimes such marriages break up as soon as one of the partners has a lover. Lure knows firsthand what will be said about her in noble society if she gets divorced because her husband got another. She didn't understand why she had been given such a bad fate. Kyo Koishiwa thought that maybe God hated her. Lur lay on her bed and wondered if she should run away this night, and then thought she was so worried she had time to get hungry. Then suddenly a maid knocked on the girl's door and said that she had brought the mistress a night snack. Lur was delighted at this news and said that she could go in. Ani came in with a cart and said that she had prepared her favorite dishes on Marcus's orders. When Lur looked at the cart, she noticed that indeed only the things she loved were in there. After that night with Calix, she had a beastly appetite, and the girl thought that her father was probably just worried about her. Lure realized that he cared about her so much that he told her to prepare a night snack. She mentally thanked her father for his concern. Ani said she seasoned the dishes slightly to make them heartier. Lure thanked her for it. The girl just wanted pheasant meat, and she needed to eat properly in order to gain strength and lift her spirits. When the girl took a bite of the meat, she realized that the taste was somehow very strange. 
Then she supposed maybe it had just spoiled, but she thought it was unlikely that the Marquise's mansion would keep spoiled food, and at that moment the girl felt somehow very sick. When she tried to get up she could barely stand. At this time, Calix came to the hall and accidentally broke the statue. He wondered why things had turned out the way they did. The guy thought to himself, he couldn't be wrong. His plan was perfect. Calix remembered how Alain had told him that the prince had confessed his love. He thought the prince was brave enough if he was trying to take possession of his woman. But he's just a spoiled prince and nothing more. The guy squeezed the piece of the statuette in his hands. So he bled and thought he wanted everyone to know that Lure was his woman. When they first met Lure, he immediately liked the girl's scent, but she didn't like it. Calix was still very happy when he found out that she would be his woman. To get closer to the shy Lure, unfamiliar with kindness and modesty, he made an effort to become kinder. And it's all just for the girl, because it takes a lot of very long time for people like her to become obedient. And in order to get her attention, he purposely injured himself and also got caught in the rain. All his deeds were a resounding success, and this kindness became a trap into which Lure's heart fell. Her rope-bound hands and the shackles her feet are shackled in, only she doesn't have to know about it at all, and to the girl he'll just be good Calix. He wants her to get attached to him, to look only at him, because he'll never let go of Lure. At that moment, Calix thought that whatever his lover was up to, there was no way he was going to let her escape. When the girl felt a little better, she walked down the hallway and hoped it was just her imagination. She couldn't be pregnant with Calix's child. Lure thought it was just a mistake and she was probably just a little sick. She should be calm and talk to a specialist about the whole situation. After that, the girl knocked on the wooden door. A girl named Alice opened it. She asked Mrs. Lure what had brought her at such a late hour. Lure was very nervous, so she told Alice that apparently she was pregnant. Alice led the lady and sat her down on the bed, asking if she was sure. Is it the Duke of Rochester's child? Alice said that they weren't even married yet. Lure was embarrassed and said it was an accident. The doctor then examined her and told her that she believed her nausea was stress-related and not pregnancy-related. Pregnancy manifests itself differently in different people. But her nausea was too early, and Alice suggested a checkup just in case. She said it was the only way they would know for sure if Lure was pregnant or not. Alice walked over to the table where the blue stone lay and said that it was the latest magical artifact that produced incredibly accurate examinations. The doctoress then asked for Mistress's hand, drawing blood from it. Alice explained that if the crystal changed its color to red, enough to 99%, she was pregnant. At that moment, Alice squeezed a few drops of blood from the syringe onto Crystal. Lure didn't know what to do if she really was pregnant. In a month, Calix would meet Seiya and fall in love with her. Then Lure would become a weight on Calix's shoulders. He'll probably hate her because of that. If they divorce while she's carrying his child, she'll hate Calix and Seiya so much she'll want to kill them. And then the girl would become a villain, just like she was in the original. And that's when Alice said she was done with the examination. After that, the doctor stepped away from the table, and Lure saw a crystal of bright red color. Then Alice said that she must be pregnant after all. After that, Lure went back to her room and tried to sleep, but when she fell asleep, she dreamed again. This dream was familiar to her. She had seen it so many times that she was used to it by now. In it, a girl was holding the hand of a little girl, but then Calix suddenly appears. He takes the girl in his arms and tells her that Lure is not her mother. After that, he brings the girl over to Seiya and tells her that this is her mom. Lure tries to scream that no, it's her baby, and he doesn't dare take her away. Lure starts blaming Calix's new lover, and she says it's all her fault. She came out of nowhere and took her husband and daughter away from her. That girl had taken everything from her. But then suddenly Seiya spoke up and asked if it was really all her fault. She is, after all, a saint who has received the blessing of the god Venus. Everything in this world is made for her and Calix and his happy future. The girl turned to Lure and called her poor thing and told her that she was so very wrong. There was nothing in this world that belonged to her. After this, Lure finds herself tied to a pole. She hears someone's voice saying that the villains who attempted to kill the saint should be consigned to divine fire. It's the only way they can earn God's favor. And at that moment, Lure looks at Calix, and blue flames encircle her. The girl feels a terrible pain that pierces her whole body. She does not understand why she is in such agony. And at that moment she gets a silhouette of her daughter telling her mom not to cry and she'll save her. 
but then suddenly Lura starts to hear someone's voice calling her. She wakes up and realizes that it was a dream. When she sat on the bed, Ani came over to her and asked if she was having a nightmare again because she was so sweaty. Lur didn't realize what it had just been. She didn't remember anything from that dream, but she remembered the emotions well. Then the girl sat on the bed and asked that Ani pour her tea. The doors to the mistress's room were open, and Lur noticed that all the servants were somehow hurrying and fumbling. Then she asked why everyone was so busy, what was going on. Ani asked her if mistress didn't know. Lur asked what she didn't know, at which point the maid told her that a saint had appeared in town. Ani told the girl to sit down and she would bring her tea soon. Lur sat down in the chair, and she couldn't believe that Seiya had already arrived. It was too soon because in the original, she wasn't supposed to show up until a month later. She wondered what Calix was doing right now. She wondered if he had already met her and even fallen in love at first sight. Lur thought she didn't love him enough to be jealous. However, when she imagines them together, her heart sinks. She's such a fool. The girl tried her best to avoid Calix and ended up hurting him with her indifferent behavior. So it was too late to think about the consequences. The girl couldn't believe that. Would he really leave her? She knew it would happen this way, but it was an unbearable pain. She wondered if she was so insignificant to Calix, but then suddenly a blue-colored bird started knocking on her window. As the girl opened the window, a bird flew in, and she realized that Calix had sent it. When Lur saw it, she was overjoyed, for she thought he was going to meet Seiya, but he sent her a bluebird. Lur wondered if he was still thinking about her. It wasn't impossible, but in the original, he hadn't sent the bluebird, and Lur wasn't pregnant. Then the girl decided that maybe Calix wouldn't leave her, and they would be together forever. Lur decided that she would believe it to the last. She should confront him immediately, just talk to him, tell him that everything was a lie, and tell him she still loves him. She doesn't care what the original was. She wants to be with Calix, so they owe it to her to talk. With those thoughts, the girl went to Calix's mansion. At this time, the guy was having a meeting. One of the attendees said to get to the main topic of their meeting. It's about the goddess, no doubt about it. The girl found near the divine tree at the great temple is none other than the goddess they have been waiting for. He asked why they should not have a celebration in honor of such a great event. One of the guests seconded his suggestion. Calix didn't listen to them, wondering when this boring meeting would end. He sat there thinking only of Lur and how he wanted to meet her sooner rather than later. The guy sitting next to him turned to him and said that apparently he didn't care much about the meeting. He said that the Duke of Rochester's whole head was full of thoughts of his sweetest bride, and he asked if there was no room at all to discuss the goddess. Guy said that he believes that the Duke has a hard time with his beloved, and he also could not remain indifferent to her, because Lady Ackley is a real beauty. This made Calix very angry, and he didn't understand how the prince even dared to talk about his lure. But Calix held back his anger and said that the prince could care less, and he was right. She was indeed beautiful. However, Lure is not so simple as to fall in love with every person she meets. After all, she's not only cute, but also smart enough to be a good judge of character. Calix said that as far as he knew, an ill-mannered upstart had confessed his love to her, but he was immediately rejected. The prince, hearing this, was very surprised, and then asked how he even dared. But Calix did not listen to him, and getting up from the table, suggested that we take a short break. After that, Calix went outside and decided to take a little walk. He was very tired from all of this. He thought that this meeting would probably last into the evening. He didn't understand why he should even care about this goddess. Calix wants to meet Lure more than anything right now, and no goddess matters to him at all. But then suddenly, when he looked to the side, he saw a black-haired girl. He knew her. Lur, who was walking through some bushes, didn't understand what to do. How could she be so stupid? She's a graceful lady, after all. Besides, she's in her twenties, and yet she's lost. There were hedges all around, but she didn't understand why. As tasteless as the prince is, this is over the top. This is a jungle, not a garden. Lur suddenly thought that if she stayed in this jungle for the rest of her life, I wish she'd brought a maid with her. A lady like her shouldn't go out alone but it wasn't the first time it had happened to her. She used to do this a lot when she was a kid. For example, she would go into town alone to get a snack, and then her father would find out about her antics and put her under house arrest. Lur thought Calix had said he liked her just the way she was, 
He's so kind, her dear fiancé. The girl thought that she really wanted to meet him soon. Lur loves Calix very much, and only he can become her husband. But then suddenly someone's voice interrupted her musings. It called out to the girl. Lur thought it was Calix, so she turned around excitedly. But it wasn't him. The prince came closer to her and asked if it was really her, Lady Ackley. The girl was a little disappointed that it was not her lover. But remembering her manners, Lur bowed and greeted his highness. The boy told her to just call him Eddie. Then he asked, had she come to see the Duke of Rochester? Eddie said that during their meeting, the Duke had been thinking only of the girl. He said it was sweet enough, but however their feelings were only a passing aggravation, that's all. After all, Duke Calix is a man, and they look at other women often enough. Eddie said that if he hurt her heart, she'd always have a backup, like a lonely prince without his princess. But then Eddie's assistant said it was time to go back to the meeting room. The prince was disappointed by the news. Eddie turned and said that, whatever it was, he would wait for Lady Ackley. Always would be waiting. Lur was really disgusted. After this conversation she thought and realized that if she followed them, she could get out because of this trap. So she ran to catch up with them, and after a few minutes, the girl, peering out from around the corner to avoid being seen, saw that she had finally made it out. After that she walked along the path and thought that this is how a real garden should be. There were elegant flowers and a fountain with beautiful statues. There were also elaborately carved marble pillars and a roof. The structure was so graceful, as if it were the temple of God. Lur thought about it and realized that the marble pillars and the roof, so this was the temple of God. The girl wondered what she would do if she happened to meet Seiya in this place. Lur thought it was unlikely she'd be able to face her outside. But when she looked, she saw Calix beside her, with Seiya by her side. They were standing and talking amongst themselves. Lur, when she saw this, couldn't believe that Calix had met Seiya after all. They were smiling at each other and talking about something. Lur knew, of course, that they were bound to meet sooner or later. She knew, of course, but she was still hurt. Suddenly the girl thought how could she have forgotten about such a thing. It's not like she's the main character in the story. Lur was very upset about that. But then suddenly the girl felt something pressing in her chest. She didn't realize what was happening. Her heart hurt so much, as if it had been stabbed. Lur stood and watched the two flirting with each other. The girl's heart was torn to pieces. Lur thought she was such a fool. What could she have found to do? It was her destiny, no matter how hard she tried to change it. She couldn't save his family, even knowing they were dead. The girl continued to love him, even realizing that she would remain a villain in people's memory. And even now, when she had such a chance, she could not change her fate. The girl was in a lot of pain. Calix sent her a bird that heralded a great event, and that event turned out to be the meeting of Calix and Seiya. Then the girl wondered what would happen to her child. What would happen to the child that wasn't in the original? She will be a fatherless daughter and also the daughter of Lur Eckley. People would point fingers at her and judge her. The living death girl didn't know what to do in such a situation. Lur thought that she would not let this happen. Protect her at all costs. She couldn't let her die because of her mother's misdeeds. Lur had finally decided for herself that her daughter would survive at all costs. She would protect her. With these thoughts, the girl left. After a while, Lur arrived at the train station and thanked Alice for seeing her off. Alice said she trusted her, so she would help in any way she could. But she hoped that one day she would tell her the reason why she had decided to leave without telling the Duke of Rochester about the child. Lur at this point thought that she just can't do that. This is the world inside the novel, and she knows she's going to be the villain in the future. The girl is facing an unhappy ending. Lur wonders if the day will come when she will tell someone about her fate. Here suddenly Alice interrupted her musings and asked if her mistress could hear her at all. Alice repeated that the peninsula of Jula, where she was going to go, was also known as the end of the world, as far as she knew. The winds there are very strong. The rains are often heavy, and there are many thieves and pirates in the land. The girl asked if Lur was sure she wanted to live there. Lur replied that she was 100% sure. Alice said there was no point in discouraging her in that case. In fact, Lur couldn't change her fate, so she simply has no choice. She must disappear without a trace before it's too late. If the girl leaves her hometown for a place not mentioned in the novel, then she won't have to worry about her life, much less the baby's. Then suddenly Alice remembered that she had forgotten to tell the girl. 
she contacted her friend who lived in the places she was going to. They've known each other since they were kids. He is a very kind person, so he will help her. Lure asked if that was true, then thanked and apologized for causing the girl so much trouble. Alice told Mistress that when she saw her, anyone would want to help, so it's not a burden to her. And also Lure is a very nice person in this world. The girl felt embarrassed by such compliments. Suddenly Alice asked if Madame was hungry. They sell pancakes at the station entrance. She can buy them for her. Lure said that she wouldn't say no if it wasn't too hard for the girl to do it. Alice answered her that she would be back soon and left. In afterthought, she told the girl that if they started hitting on her, let her scream. Lure laughed and replied that fine, she would. The girl thought that Alice was right after all, and there were too many people at the station. It was possible that there might be some strange people among them, but she didn't understand why everyone was looking at her like that. The girl suggested that maybe it was because she looked more suspicious than everyone else. Her father and her brother don't know anything yet, and they won't know until night falls. The girl feels terrible leaving him with only a letter and not talking to them in person. She was also sorry she had run away from Calix. The girl should hate him, but it was fate's destiny. The girl was grateful that he had loved her all this time. But then suddenly, as she looked around, she saw a familiar face. It was Calix. Lure didn't understand what he was doing here. The girl assumed that maybe he had come for her. Suddenly she heard two people talking to each other. One guy asked how it could be understood. Why should ordinary people like them? But she couldn't hear what was said. Next the other guy said, Didn't he hear that a goddess had appeared in town so all the trains were heavily guarded? But things seemed to have settled down. Lure understood everything now. Calix had kissed Saya, and it was silly to expect anything else. But by then Alice had already managed to return. She called out to Mistress to come up to her later. Lure, while heading towards the girl, accidentally bumped into some man. It even made my hat come off. Alice said it was very rude. He didn't even apologize to her. Lure, picking up her hat, said that everything was fine and she was fine. We should just get on the train soon. But then suddenly the girl did not have time to grab it. A strong wind blew up and blew her hat away. At that moment Calix appeared right in front of her. He saw the girl and asked her what she was doing here. Calix arrived at the station because they were ordered to patrol the station, and when they were done, his deputy said they could leave. Calix didn't like the fact that because of some goddess the whole country was standing on its ears. He was tired of it all already. But at that moment, his assistant noticed Mrs. Lure. When Calix heard that, he wondered very much what she was doing here. He couldn't believe that she wanted to go away and leave him alone. So the guy approached her. When he asked what she was doing here, Lure turned to Alice and said she had to run and very urgently. The girl grabbed Alice's hand and they started to run away. So even the food fell out. Calix couldn't understand what was going on at all, so he ran after the girls. Lure said that if they get on the train, the magic will block the doors, so they should hurry. The girls quickly ran into the train, so Calix couldn't catch up with them. The magic circle immediately closed the doors so no one can open them. The guy stood and banged on the window for them to open the door for him. Lure, with tears in her eyes, apologized to him and said she couldn't do it any other way. Calix was still trying to open the door in futile attempts and asked for Lure to come out so they could talk. Lure, turning away from him, asked him to forget about her and leave her alone. Alice started to lead the girl away, because this is a lot of stress for her. Suddenly Calix was pissed off, really pissed off. He wondered if she really thought he would just let her go. I mean, he's already said that they're connected to destiny, so they can't be without each other. When Lure heard that, she thought it was her words. He was the one who first kissed Saya, the one who smiled affectionately and spoke to her. Did he even know how much pain he had caused? He doesn't know anything about her feelings or her experiences, so they should break up. He'd already met his fate, even with all those tender words, despite his promises to protect her at all costs. She has fallen madly in love with Calix, but he still doesn't know how she feels. The guy kept yelling, asking why she was doing this. He said he couldn't live a day without her. Lure suddenly stopped and said she'd had enough, that he should stop breaking her heart. Calix was very surprised to hear this. He didn't understand what she was talking about. Lure moved closer to him and told him not to pretend he wanted to stop her. He's going to get rid of her. So let her go now and don't hurt her more. The girl cried and told him to just forget about her and live happily with that other one. Calix wondered and asked what she even meant by that. 
but he didn't have time because the train had already started to leave. At that moment, Lur fell to the floor and cried even harder. Alice tried to calm her down, but it was no use. Calix, who had been left bewildered at the train station, didn't understand what she meant by I jeweled woe her. One more day, and Lur would be his. He should have married her even sooner. In a couple days she would have been locked in his cage forever. He still couldn't believe that the girl had escaped. Suddenly his assistant came up to Calix and said that he had rounded up all the patrolmen. The boy ignored his words and asked where the train had gone. The aide said that unless he was mistaken, this train was bound for the kingdom of Arona. Calix said to put checkpoints at every station in the empire because they need to find the young girl with pink hair. He told the guards to find her and bring her safely to him afterward. Calix will not give up. He will definitely fight for Lure. He will definitely find her by all means. Wherever she goes and whoever she becomes, whatever life she lives, he is sure to find the girl. He doesn't care how many years it takes to find her. The reason is simple. She belongs only to him. And so it went on for seven years. A little girl with bright white hair ran up to her mother and asked to see it because Letty had drawn a picture. Her mom came over and looked in the album. The girl said that Lottie was so good and hugged her daughter. Lure had to pass through several checkpoints on her way to the Jula Peninsula, but thanks to Alice, she was able to get there without too much fuss. She had a daughter on the peninsula. She took the best of both her and Calix. And this year is Letitia's sixth birthday. Lure was drinking some kind of drink and said it was the girl's birthday tomorrow. What does she want as a present? Letty replied that she didn't need anything. They didn't have any money. Lure thought at that moment that she had spent all the money she had taken from home to raise her. Then she said she had money for a gift for her daughter, and yet what she wanted. Letty wondered. What was it that she wanted? She wasn't used to wanting something, for she had always known she wouldn't get it. But after thinking about it, she said she would be very happy if Lure wore a pretty dress and gathered her hair with a hairpin. The girl said that if she always walked around in that old dress, she would be uncomfortable. Lure was very surprised. She didn't even think that her own daughter would be ashamed of her. Maybe it's because she thinks she's boring. Then the girl thought, What if she patched up her old dress and put it on? But it wouldn't be as pretty as all her past ones, of course. Suddenly Lur watched her daughter drawing her and asked, Why is that angel wearing a horse mask? The girl said that Angel Hapos is very shy, so he can't talk to others without a mask. Afterward, Letty said that the angel with horns is the angel Elifi. She saw him in her dream yesterday. Lur was very surprised. She didn't even think that her daughter could dream about the seven archangels of the phoenix god. Letty continued and said she also dreamed about the angel Pelistella. He said her mom was stupid. Lur, when she heard this, was very surprised and asked what he said. But the girl said not to worry because she thought she was a genius. The girl thought that probably everyone knows about the seven archangels of the phoenix. They talk about them a lot, but no one mentions the details. Lur couldn't believe she had a daughter with such a fertile imagination. Suddenly there was a knock at the front door, and the girl told Letty to come out and play. She knew at once that it was Nana. Letty told her mom that she would go and play with her and be back by five o'clock that evening without fail. Lure shouted to her daughter that if any strange people approached her, she should wear Aunt Alice's ring and not run far away. The girl replied, okay, and ran off already to play with Nana. Letty is already such a willful girl. She was able to make friends despite only playing with her mom all the time. Closing the front doors, Lure thought that no matter how much she told her, the girl always does things her own way. But then suddenly someone intercepted her and the doors opened. Some guy appeared on the threshold and said hello, saying, My beautiful Rose. Lure recognized it was Baron Camnell, the worst kind of man she could have met that day. The Baron said Lure's eyes were as beautiful as emeralds, and the girl just wanted him to go away. Then the man asked if she was alone. He entered the house without even asking permission. Lure replied that she was alone. Her father and Will had gone to work. After that, the guy walked over and sat down at the table. The girl did not understand why he was sitting here. After all, the Baron was very tactless. Lure came up to him and asked him what the occasion was. Camnell was surprised and asked, What did he need an excuse for? He just wanted to meet a girl. He said that Lure was just wasting her time. Working in that store, she... Did he? The Baron said he doesn't like women with children but she's an incredibly charming girl, so he's willing to marry her no matter what. Camnell told her to confess whether living with William Osborne was satisfactory. Lure wanted to tie him up and feed him to the sharks. 
Lur, after a little thought, said that William was a very even husband, smiled and asked seriously. Afterward, he himself said that William was nothing more than a substitute for his father. Did she really think he didn't know him? Lur ignored his words and thanked him for the offer. But she is quite content with her life as a commoner. The Baron got angry and said she was a fool. Then he added that he would see how long she could live like that. Let her be assured that she would surely regret her words, and be sure to come running to him still on her knees apologizing. But as the man walked out the door, two more men met him. The older one asked the Baron, Does he have some business with them again? But the Baron didn't answer anything, just smugly hummed, slapping their shoulders. The boy ran up to the girl. At first he wanted to call her Lure, but then he remembered and called her Rose. He also asked if she was okay. The girl replied that she was fine. The guy put the purchases on the table and said that they should always be together then. Let her not want to go anywhere alone. This guy's name was William. He's a very kind, caring, and thoughtful man. The guy even agreed to play the role of her husband to hide her real identity. Lure somehow thinks she doesn't deserve his kindness. Then the girl turned to his father and asked what they had bought there and what would be for dinner. But the man ignored her question and said they had heard something unusual at the market. The man said that people from the capital had come to town. At that moment, Nana and Letty were playing hide-and-seek in the street. Letty had to hide somewhere, but she didn't know where. Nothing occurred to her. But then all of a sudden she saw some beautiful clearing and thought maybe it was here somewhere. But when she turned her head, she saw the beautiful flowers that grew there. Letty liked them very much, and she thought she should show them to her mother. When the girl has collected them and will immediately show them to her mom, but when she stands up, she accidentally crashes into something. Letty fell to the ground, and when she looked up, she saw a man. He asked if she was okay. Letty seemed to recognize him. The girl looked at him with enchanted eyes and thought, Is it really him? Then coming to her senses a little, Letty asked the man if he was sick. The boy was surprised and asked what she meant. Letty said it's just that he just looks already and... She asked if I could tell him where the hospital was. The man ignored her question. He pushed the hair from her eyes with his fingers and recognized those green, beautiful, and big eyes. Then he asked how old she was. Letty answered that she was still five, but that she would be six tomorrow. The guy replied that he understood. Then the girl screamed and repeated that she would be six tomorrow. The man said he was glad but the girl asked if he could praise her more. The guy was very surprised and asked, Why would he do that? Letty said he was a fool. She could count, and he could praise her for that at least. The man smiled, stroked the hair on his head and said she was right. Not everyone could count like she could. Letty said she could count from one to a thousand and asked if she was a genius. The man said she was indeed a genius. When he looked at her carefully and asked if she lived in the neighborhood and where her parents were, Letty frowned and said that if he wanted to know about her so badly, let him introduce himself first. Her mom said you shouldn't talk to strange people. And he is very strange. The girl then added that he looked sick, so she decided to help him. The man replied that the girl was kind enough. He started to say that his name was Calix, but then thought it would be better to change it, and said Carrot. Letty was surprised and said he had a very strange name. She began to repeat it. Carrot, Carrot, Carrot. After that she laughed. Calix burst into a smile and asked, So does that mean she's Letty? When he inquired, What are her parents' names? Letty was angry that he kept asking the same thing. She didn't understand why he wanted to know her parents' names. After a little thought she said her mom named her Letitia, and that name means joy. Her mom's name is Rose Osborn and her dad's name is William Osborn. Calix asked how old her mom was. Letty thought the man was very suspicious and asked why he would want to know. When he didn't say anything back, Letty turned around and said she'd had enough. She had nothing more to talk to him about. Calix asked if she could stop and the girl replied that the hospital was there and wished him luck. Then suddenly someone approached him, and a girl asked if she should follow her. But Calix replied that there was no need. They had already learned enough. The girl said she hoped he would find her. Calix answered her that he would surely find her, even if he had to sell his soul to the devil. Sometime later, when evening came, Letty had long since returned home. She said to her mother as she went to bed that she was so tired, it seemed as if the day had just begun, and it was already night. The girl fell asleep very quickly, and Lur didn't realize where she had gotten so worked up. In fact, the girl was dumbfounded. She was told her daughter said that she had met some sick but handsome uncle, 
When she remembered the words that people from the capital had arrived, Lur couldn't believe it. There was a lot of talk that Duke Rodster was traveling around the continent himself with some business. Only lately those rumors had died down. Unless you count the rumors of a goddess working in the capital, there's nothing else going on in the world. However, Lur hadn't heard anything about Calix and Seiya getting married, and that's very strange. The girl didn't understand anything. Their wedding was one of the most important events in the history of the Empire, and a great feast was to be organized on such an occasion. As much as she asked the traders coming from the capital, they had not heard of any wedding. Lur wondered if their destiny had failed. Suddenly she wondered if the two of them were even in love. She didn't have any accurate information about it, only guesses, but the girl's thoughts were interrupted by her daughter's voice. She turned to the angel and said that it was really her. Lur thought that the girl was still fidgety, even when she slept. Lur decided it was about time she got over Calix and Seiya. Whether they got married or not was no longer her concern. The girl must give her daughter a bright future, so that she lives and does not need anything, and she does not dream of more. Lur kissed her daughter's forehead and wished her a happy birthday. She loved her more than anything in the world. After that, Lur went into town. She went into a store, and the shopkeeper was surprised to see her and asked her what had brought her to them at such a late hour. The girl approached the display case and said she decided to pick up a gift for her daughter while she was sleeping. The man asked if she could wait a bit. He was about to finish. Rose was surprised to hear herself say okay, but she thought to herself that she had placed the order a week ago. Was it really not done at all? The salesman said the gift would be just perfect. Lure noticed that they had a fireplace and thought it was very warm. It was still cold outside even though it was almost spring. Lur wanted to go home as soon as possible. Suddenly a woman came into the store, and when she saw Rose, she said, Look who's here. It's the seductive fox herself. The girl said that it came out of nowhere with her, a child under her heart thief of men's hearts, destroyer of other people's lives. Rose. That woman was the Herald's daughter, a girl named Lucy. She hated Lur more than anyone else in this town. Every time they meet, the girl tries to insult her and show her dislike. Lur says she doesn't know what she's talking about because Letitia is Will's daughter. Lucy said the girl had no shame or conscience. Let her let poor Will go free already. She's going to be the Baron's mistress anyway. Lur was very surprised and didn't understand why she still had to stop being his mistress. He certainly looks in on the girl often, but she has never once sympathized with him. Rose replied that it was very hard to be popular, and her charm had worked even on Baron Kimnal. Lucia rejoiced and said that she had confessed. Rose said she would only do it once. Her husband is William, and she has no intention of becoming the Baron's mistress. Lucy said she was really pissing her off. All girls like her pass on their husbands sooner or later, and she said she'd be the first to tell Will about it. After that, the girl left the store, and Lur understood that many different rumors about her would appear again. But the girl thought that in time, they would settle down anyway. So there was no need to worry about something that hadn't happened yet. And at that moment, the salesman finally returned. He apologized to the girl for keeping her waiting, but Rose replied that it was nothing. He then took out a box and said that it was the very present for Letitia, all as she had asked. And he also told the girl to give his congratulations. Lure picked up the box. The girl really hoped she would like the gift. After that, the girl was on her way home. She was very cold, so she thought she should hurry up. Lure was only thinking about the present she had prepared for her daughter. She thought she would like it very much, but then suddenly the streetlights went out on the street where she was passing. Lure was very surprised by this. She thought that if she went the other way, she would get more time. The girl did not know what to do in such a situation. Suddenly she saw a silhouette at the end of the street. When she looked closer, she realized that it was definitely not a person. Lure thought maybe it was a monster, but she didn't understand where it could have come from. The silhouette was closing in on her, and she realized she had to run, but she couldn't, because her legs froze with fear, and the beast kept coming closer and closer. Lure was already waiting for her fate, but then suddenly, when nothing happened, she opened her eyes and saw some person in front of her. She was very surprised at this. Lure couldn't believe her eyes. Someone had come to save her. Suddenly a guy spoke up and asked what she was doing here at this hour. Lure recognized the voice, of course. Calix asked the girl if she was all right. Lure thought there could be no mistake here. Even after seven years of living there, she hadn't forgotten that voice. At that moment, 
The girl missed her gift. Calix repeated his question about whether she was okay. He came closer to her and asked her why she was silent. The girl thought it was bad enough that he would find out who she was. Lure had to run away quickly so he wouldn't recognize her face. She couldn't believe he'd come there to find her. The girl thought she would never see him again. It had been seven years. She didn't understand why he wasn't snuggling in Seiya's arms. Lure wondered if he still loved her. But she pushed the thought away, because she knew she couldn't think about it. It would only make things worse. She doesn't want to be Lure Eckley anymore. The girl thought he didn't see her face and she should flee the city immediately. Lure returned home and started packing her bag. She never thought he would come to this town to find her. She didn't understand how he had even thought of it. She can't run far with Letty, so she has to go to the nearest town, which is Balrog. She would wait there for Alice, and then it would be clear what to do next. After that, the girl came to her daughter and told her that it was time to get up. They were going on a trip. Rose said they would go to Balrog first. She said she had been there before. Letty replied that she had, and it was a very pretty beach with pebbles. Lure suggested going there again when they saw Aunt Alice. Letty had agreed, of course. All she had to do was persuade Will. But as she came down the stairs, she heard Will and his father talking to someone who was opening the door for them. The guy said she told him her last name was Osborne and asked if they were willing to take responsibility for what she said. Will said that's exactly what it was, and asked who he even was. Calix told them that it would be better if they didn't know. Lure thought when she saw him that he had come to this house. The girl decided she would contact Will later, but for now she needed to run as fast as she could. When the girl wanted to make a stealthy run to the emergency exit, she saw that she had been spotted. Calix, when he saw her, asked, Lure, is that you? After that, the guy immediately rushed toward her, but Will blocked his way, and the girl thought she should run. At night, when they had run for some time, they found themselves in the forest. Letty asked if her mother was all right. Rose replied that she was fine. Now she would just get some rest and they would go on. Letty said it was so strange. She wondered how Uncle Carrot knew her mother's real name. When she wanted to say something, they were suddenly approached. It was a man. He asked who was here and where she was going so late at night and had taken her daughter with her. It was Baron Keemnal, and he was drunk. Baron asked if the girl had decided to run away from that asshole Osborne. Lure told him to stay away. He would realize what would happen if he hit on her. And that's when the girl started using magic. The ram said that he was so nice to her and she responded to him like this. After that, the guy started to approach her. But then suddenly he felt a sharp pain all over his body. Lure, when she turned around to see what happened, she saw that she was protected by Alice, who was able to use her magical abilities just in time. The girl asked how they were, and then added what she was doing here so late at night. Lure explained that there was trouble, and Calix had come to Canelo for her, so they had to run. Alice said that meant he had found them after all, and then asked if they were sure they should have run away from him. Maybe there was just a misunderstanding between them. Lure apologized to her, telling her that she couldn't tell her everything, and really, even after seven years, she was still scared to think about it. Lure said that she knew that if she met Calix, something terrible was bound to happen. The girl couldn't stand these emotions and cried. Alice said it was too late, and it's too cold outside. They need somewhere to survive the night. Lure said she wanted to go to Balrog. Alice got up and said she would find them a wagon now. Let them wait for her here. At that moment, Lure's daughter came up to her and said that Letty was still small and couldn't do anything. She was very glad that Aunt Alice had come to their rescue because terrible things could have happened. Lure said the girl was right. She herself thought that she was very smart, so she rarely worried about her, but sometimes she acted very childish. Letty looked straight into her mother's eyes and said that the angel had told her that she would be able to see her daddy today. He also told her to be careful. But you at that moment Alice called Rose and Letty because the carriage had finally arrived, so she told her daughter to let them talk in the carriage already. Putting her daughter in the wagon, she thought they would get in the carriage and get as far away from Canelo as possible so he wouldn't find them. When the coachman already wanted to go, his horses became very frightened, and so did he, because they saw some bright light. Lure ran out of the wagon and asked where he was running off to, and after that she heard his voice. Calix came closer to them and said that Lure was very good at running away from people. He had no idea she had such a hidden talent. Then he asked, Could it be the merit of the witch who is now by her side? Lure shouted to Alice to keep an eye on Letty. The girl shouted, Okay, 
and started to move farther away, taking the girl in her arms. Kallik stepped closer to Lure, put his hands on her cheeks, and asked her who gave her permission to run away. The girl looked him straight in the eye and replied that it had been seven years. Kallik ignored her words and asked, Surely this is not a dream. Let him answer her. It was indeed her. The girl was getting uncomfortable, and she said through force that yes, it was her. But as if he didn't believe her words, he asked, Are you the real Lure? Kallix asked why she left him. He was even willing to die for her. The boy couldn't hold back his emotions, he cried. Kallix had vowed then, seven years ago, to live until he found her. That very day at the train station, that day he thought, after her words, that he had lived happily with her. Had she really thought he had a mistress? Who had given her that idea? As soon as he thought about that question, he saw in the reports that Lore was visiting the Imperial Palace. It was the day the goddess had announced herself, and it was the day the girl had decided to leave the capital. He went to Anja's maid. The latter said that the girl was shocked when she mentioned the arrival of the goddess. She understood that it was an unusual event, but the reaction of the mistress was quite strange. Calix felt like he had let go of something important, but he couldn't even think of what exactly had brought that thought to her mind. The only thing he knew for sure was that the goddess was to blame for Lur's escape. He didn't understand why the girl doubted him, for she was the only one worthy of his love. But he doesn't understand why the girl doesn't believe him. Doesn't she know how much he suffers without her? He can't even live without Lur. He wished she would just come back to him. The only thing that made him happy was the dream where he saw Lur running away from him. He woke up screaming in terror. His assistant ran into him and asked if he was okay. The girl wanted him to just forget about her, and everything would get better for him then. The girl didn't understand why he was so driven by thoughts of this lure. Why couldn't he just forget her? One day his assistant came to him and said she had a letter. Calix asked what the letter was. The girl told him to look at the sender. There was an address written there, and he realized it was probably about lure. He told the assistant that they were going there immediately. He told her that they should go there as soon as possible. He wished Lur would just wait for him, for they would meet soon, and then he wouldn't let her escape again. She would stay with him forever and only belong to Calix. Calix then asked the girl why she had abandoned him. Did she really think he would betray his loyalty to her? The guy asked if she ran away because she didn't believe him. Let her explain herself so he can finally understand why she left him. Lur thought that even if she wanted to go back to him, it was no longer possible. It was too late. Then suddenly she remembered a moment from the past when, Grieving the death of her parents, Calix had approached her and asked for just one thing. He wanted her to be with him, not leave him. Lure should have been cold to him then, should have made him hate himself, but she couldn't do that. She fell for him without memory, realizing she shouldn't, but in the end she betrayed him and ran away like some coward without explaining anything. Then Lure apologized to him. She apologized to him, standing there in tears. She wanted to avoid her unfortunate fate with all her might. But at the same time, she wanted to be loved by Calix. The boy asked seriously, Just sorry. Calix had said that for seven years he had suffered. Seven whole years. Did she really think a casual, I'm sorry, could ease his compassion over all those years? He also took her hair and asked her what she had done to it. Why had it turned brown? He loved her old hair color so much, didn't he? It was so beautiful. Then Calix said they should take it all back. Her hair and their destiny. Calix told her to hurry back to the capital and have a wedding. They should make her a new wedding dress. They would order a platinum tiara that would match her pink hair perfectly. Lure immediately moved away from him. She begged him to stop, to stop all this. After all, she had a daughter and even a husband. Calix smiled and said that he knows. He knows all this and will lovingly raise their daughter. Then he said, What about the husband? And asked if he had touched her with his hands. If so, he would have to cut them off. Or at this point, Calix gave it some thought and said that yes, it would be better to kill him after all. Lur was shocked. She wondered what it was that he was even saying. But at that moment he took her hand and made some kind of green bracelet. Lur asked what it was. When she looked closer, she realized it was a magic stone. She couldn't move. The girl was shocked. The stone had robbed her of her movements. Lur couldn't believe he was really going to take her with him. Then Calix said it was his gift to her.